in this section, we're going to finish up looking at indirect proof. And we're going to take a look at a classical proof of irrational numbers. And then we're going to momentarily step away from proofs. And we're going to start taking a look at elementary sequences and elementary series. So that way they can set us up for the next section, which is going to be proof by mathematical induction. Let's start by trying to take a look at proving one of the most classical types of proofs is that verifying that the square root of two is irrational. To be able to do this, we have to do um, the contradiction method or an indirect proof. So we're going to take the negation of this. And the negation of root two is irrational is going to be that root two is rational. All right, so, and that's pretty easy. I think everybody could see that pretty easily. So let's start by contradiction. Okay, so let's proof, and we're going to say suppose not. Suppose that root two is rational. And of course, this means by the very definition of rational is that the square root of two is going to be equal to the quotient of two integers. Okay, so by definition of rational, this means that the square root of two is equal to a over b, where a and b are elements in the integers. b is non-zero. And something that we haven't said before, but well, too often, but it's, it's certainly true, is that A and B share no common factors. And this is actually the key to the entire proof. And I'll also throw in there that A and B are arbitrary but particular integers. All right, so now that we have all of that, let's go ahead and start doing some algebra on the square root of two equals a over b, and hopefully we encounter a contradiction, okay? So we can say, hence, we can say square root of two, which is equal to a over b, which is given, means that two is equal to a square over b square. All right, and that's just by some algebra, squaring both sides. Right? And then we can multiply both sides by b square, and we get that 2b square is equal to a square. Okay, and that's just by multiplication. All right, so what does this mean? Well, that means that a square contains a factor of 2. Okay, so hence, by definition of divisibility, We can say a square contains a factor of two and is divisible by two. All right. So this also means, hence, this means that a is also divisible by two, all right? And how do we know that? Well, we proved it earlier. We proved it on a previous homework assignment, okay? And I'm gonna say, recall the proof that if a square is in z even, a is in z even. Okay, so we proved that earlier, okay? So we did have to go outside of this. Um, however, if you wanted to prove that, you could prove this by contraposition if you really wanted to. All right, so this means that A is equal to, let's just call it 2P 
for any p in the integers, right? Because by definition of divisibility. So a is also divisible by two, which means it has a factor of two. Okay, so two is also divisible by two. So we can go right down here, right? Um, and we could say by definition of divisibility. Right. So now remember all the way back up here, we said that 2b squared is equal to a squared, right? So we can substitute. So by substitution, we can say that b squared or 2b squared equals a squared, which was given. And so we can erase this by substitution because we haven't actually done the substitution. We could say thus, or something of that nature. So 2b squared is now going to be equal to, we said a was 2p, so we say 2p quantity squared by substitution. Right? Which means that 2b squared is going to be equal to 4p squared by some exponent rules. And if we divided both sides by 2, that means that b squared is equal to 2p squared. Okay. All right. So what does that mean? Okay, so hence, b squared contains a factor of 2. And thus, b must also contain a factor of 2. So thus, b must also contain a factor of 2. Okay, and that's just by going back up here, by using this recall to prove that if a squared is in z even, that a is in z even, right? So we just have to remember that to be able to make sure that this works. All right, so, um, so what do we mean, or what does all this say, all right? So we've said a lot, but we really haven't proved anything, all right? Well, thus, a contains, a factor of two, right? So we go up here and it says that A is divisible by two, which means it also contains a factor of two, right? Um, and that also means that B must also contain a factor of two. And we're done because now this is the contradiction, right? So right here, A contains a factor of two and B contains a factor of two. But remember at the very beginning of the problem, we said A and B share no common factors. Okay? So, however, recall that A and B share no common factors by definition of rational. And this is our contradiction. Okay, so this is a contradiction. And hence the negation is false. and the original statement is true. All right. um, thus, the square root of two is irrational. All right, so tough proof. Okay, one of the hardest ones that we're gonna do in this class, but it is a classical proof um, to be able to verify that square root of two is irrational. And this is how you would show that any square root of a number is irrational. So for instance, you could say square root of three or square root of five or square root of seven is irrational just by using this sort of algorithm. Where could we use this? Well, what about an extension? We could also prove something to the effect of seven minus three roots of two is irrational, right? 
We're going to do this again by contradiction. So we're going to say suppose not. Let's say suppose 7 minus 3 square roots of 2 is rational. And just like we did before, we're going to use the definition of rational. So by definition of rational, we could say that 7 minus 3 roots of 2 is equal to a over b, where a and b are elements of the integers, and b is non-zero. Um, we could, if we wanted to say something to the effect of, and I'm going to put both of these in brackets, that A and B share no common factors. We're not going to use that this time. And we should also state that A and B are arbitrary, but particular. All right. Now all we're going to do is we're just going to go through, do some algebra on this statement, 7 minus 3 roots of 2, until we encounter a contradiction. All right, so thus, we have 7 minus 3 roots of 2 um, is equal to a over b. And we make this 3 look like a real 3. And that's given. Um, let's subtract 7 from both sides. And let's divide everything by negative 3. And I'll fill in the steps in a moment. So we get the square root of 2 is equal to 7 over 3 minus a over 3b. Right? So this was just by subtraction. This is by division. Okay. Um, we're going to get a common denominator. So square root of 2 is going to be equal to common denominator is 3b. Okay. And to go from 7 to, to go from 3 to 3b, we have to multiply the denominator by a b. So we have to multiply the numerator by a b. All right. So just that rule of equivalent um, denominators. And then the second fraction is already equivalent. The least common denominator was already the original denominator. Okay, so that's just by least common denominator. We can get a single fraction out of this. So it'd be 7b minus a divided by 3b by subtraction. And we know that a and b are both non are both integers, b non-zero. And so we can close that out. And we could say that the square root of 2 is equal to p over q, where p and q are integers. And that's by integer closure. All right. So um, what do we see here? We see that the square root of 2 is equal to the quotient of two integers. And thus, it's rational by the definition of rational. Okay. So we can say, hence, the square root of 2 is equal to the quotient of two integers. And is rational by definition of rational. So we just said that square root of two is rational. But that doesn't make any sense because we just proved back up here that the square root of 2 is irrational, right? So, however, we proved that square root of 2 is irrational. And this is a contradiction. Right? So we can say this is a contradiction. Thus, the negation is false. And the original statement is true. Thus, 
we would say that seven minus three roots of two is irrational. All right, so hopefully that gives you a good introduction as to how to go through and work through some of these um, problems that involve the square roots and irrationality. That's the last of our indirect proofs that we're gonna be looking at for a while. And so for the rest of this section, we're gonna be taking a look at sequences and series and how to try to work with those. So that way it leads us into our next section after this, which is gonna be proof by induction.